Hello friends, this is the paper presentation for learning structural node embedding via diffusion wavelets by the authors Donald et al. You can check the link in the description for the paper. Let's say we have a graph of users in Instagram and the incoming edge in the graph represents the followers. We have no labeling information regarding the identity or the popularity of the users. But we want to group the users according to their popularities in Instagram. So this algorithm tries to solve this problem in an unsupervised manner. Here you can see in this graph there are two nodes A and B. When we examine the relation between neighbors, for example, both of them are, are a bridge node for the orange nodes to the main graph. Or the connections between the yellow and red nodes are also very similar. So the information flow from neighbors to A and B nodes is identical. Thus, the algorithm concludes that these two nodes have the same role in the graph. It calculated the diffusion pattern probability distribution for A and B and compared them. So, how can we calculate the diffusion pattern? First, the diagonal matrix is calculated for, from adjacency matrix. So, in matrix D, we have degrees for each node. In the next step, the Laplacian graph is created by subtraction of A from D. The eigenvalue and eigenvectors are calculated by eigenvalue decomposition. U is eigenvector matrix for Laplacian. Lambda equals to diagonal matrix for eigenvalues. U to the T equals the transpose of the eigenvector matrix U. The authors state that there is an analogy between temporal frequencies of a signal and eigenvalues. Since some of the nodes ha which have higher eigenvalues carry fast varying signals across the neighbors, it can be hard to see the relationship between the node and its neighbors. Therefore, it is needed to decrease the higher eigenvalues using the GS filter. The GS filter is applied on the eigenvalue matrix and the Laplacian is calculated with this new matrix so that the smoothed version of the Laplacian is obtained. So it can be seen as a modulation operator and it enforces the smoothness in the signal variation by discounting the higher eigenvalues. S is scale parameter where increasing S increases the smoothness of the Laplacian. So a wider range of neighbors can be examined. The smoothed Laplacian graph is then used for getting the spectral graph wavelet where the Laplacian is multiplicated with one hot vector for the selected node. So we have a n to the one n to the one vector for the node A where the n is the number of nodes in the graph and the nth element of this vector represents the diff diffusion from node M to node A. For example, here in this bar chart, each bar represents the one node that is connected to A, thus an element in psi vector. You can imagine that M corresponds to this bar. Then the phi function is a distribution function similar to the probability density function. It takes the diffusion pattern information of a node and then its result is a complex number. Then the real and imaginary parts of the number are kept in a XA matrix. This complex number represents the structural embedding of related node. Nodes with structurally similar local network neighborhoods have the same structural embedding. For calculating phi value, co computed psi value is used which represents flowing energy from M to A node. The phi function is applied to number of D samples which represent evenly spaced sampling points from 1 to D. Let's 
let's look at the demo. In this toy data set, we created a graph and we added house-like subgraphs to the main graph. As you can see, that house-like structures have same structural rows in the graph. Also, nodes of the house-like structure have high connectivity among them and this connectivity differentiates the role of these nodes. Nodes which have different structural rows are, are visualized with different colors. We ran the graph wave algorithm on the graph and the result is an n to the 2D matrix. For each node, 2D dimensional embedding space is projected into two dimension using PCA so that we can visualize the clusters. If two nodes have similar structural embedding, they are projected into close points in PCA plot. Therefore, the two nodes have the same role in the graph. You can see the, uh, that graph wave can perfectly capture five structural rows. Also, similar rows are projected the closer each other. Authors also compared the graph wave algorithm with all state of the art algorithm, which is Structovec on Barbell graph. Barbell graph has eight different structural nodes. For example, Barbell disks have same rows, but parts of the bar have different rows. Notice that graph wave perfectly recovers eight structural rows in the graph. However, Structovec, which is the old state of the art, cannot per perfectly recover the rows. Structovec cannot even recover rows of bar disks, which are the rightmost and leftmost parts of the graph. However, GraphWave projects the nodes perfectly on top of each other. GraphWave increased the state-of-the-art accuracy more than 100%. Authors also run the algorithm on the real-world dataset, which is European Airline dataset. This dataset contains the flights of each airline with given destination and departure airports. They expect to cluster the airports and the airlines that use these airports more frequently. As you can see on the left, graph wave clusters airports. However, all state-of-the-art Structovec cannot generalize embeddings across different airline networks and thus cannot successfully identify which airports are structurally equi equivalent across airlines. In graph wave, TSNE result, airports with the same structural role are embedded close together even if they come from different airline networks, demonstrating GraphWave's ability to learn meaningful structural embeddings for real-world networks. To conclude that, the contribution of this paper to literature is presenting a new method which is named as GraphWave for learning structural node embeddings in networks. GraphWave uses spectral graph wavelets to generate structural embedding for each node and determine the similarity of nodes in terms of their importance. This method guarantees on the optimality of learned structural embeddings. Structurally equivalent nodes have near identical embeddings in GraphWave. Experiments on real and synthetic networks also proved the analytical results and yield large gains in performance over state-of-the-art baselines. As a future work, these embeddings can be used for transfer learning. GraphWave shows importance of Laplacian. By using graph Laplacian eigenvalues and spectral graph wavelets, authors outperform the best methods significantly. That's all from us. Thank you for listening.